Welcome back to V8 TV. So far, our 1969 Corvette has had the engine swapped out for a modern LS3 and a T56 Magnum six-speed manual transmission. The team has completed the engine and transmission install, fuel system, and Holly Dominator engine management system wiring. The LS3 needs a fresh supply of air to breathe, and the limited space made it tricky to find under the hood. So the team built an aluminum air intake tube designed to scoop up fresh air from under the car. The Dominator will have to be tuned to match the airflow characteristics of the tube and k and filter. But the unit packaged well. It was painted satin black when finished. Stock Corvette engine covers were color matched to the car. The 480 horsepower LS3 will make this Corvette faster for sure, but the team also wanted to improve the way it stopped. C3 Corvettes actually come with four-wheel disc brakes. Uh, they're not a bad design, other than they're kind of small. Uh, the owner thought, if I'm going a lot faster, probably need to be able to stop a lot faster. Uh, in this case, we did a Willwood 14-inch brake kit uh, with six piston calipers up front and four pistons in the rear. Uh, when you're more than doubling the power of a car, it's always a good idea to make sure it stops, but not just stops. Uh, the way I look at this stuff, this car is going to make so much power that pick a gear, put your foot down, you're probably going to have enough power to be able to back off the throttle. You know, you might have too much power. And at the same time, I like to have too much brake. I want to make sure that the more I hit that brake pedal, the more the thing's going to grab. And the way to do that is by using good brake hardware, not only at the wheels, but also under the hood. As far as installing the Willwood disc brake kit, it's actually a little easier than a lot of disc brake swaps uh, because you're not changing a whole lot. All the stuff bolts to the stock brackets because it was already designed for disc brakes. Uh, the most difficult and time consuming part is we use two piece rotors on this car which means you have to bolt them together and safety wire all the bolts. When you bolt something together, uh, there's always potential for bolts to come loose. And because it's brakes, Willwood and us, we like to be triple safe here. So bolts are torqued, they're loctited, and then we're gonna safety wire them because they're drilled for that. Uh, the point of safety wire is to prevent bolts from backing out. So if you look at the path of the bolt here and the, the wire, if this bolt here tries to back out, it's gonna turn counterclockwise. Well, that's going to pull on the safety wire, which is on the bottom side of this bolt, which is going to try and turn it clockwise, try to tighten it up. Obviously, this bolt backing out isn't going to be able to tighten this bolt up, and vice versa. And that's basically how this process works. And the neat thing about these is this is a kit that's designed to bolt on to a Corvette, so you're not making brackets, we're not modifying something from a different car. And Willwood's been doing racing brakes for like 40 years, and uh, of course they've got a street version as well. There are differences between race brakes and street brakes. These are street brakes. Racing stuff tends to be a little bit lighter weight, but it's not really designed to be used every day, uh, but they are used in a high speed, high clamp situation. In this case, we want daily drivability reliability. And having good hardware at the wheel is half the battle. The other half is having a good source of hydraulic pressure, because you want this to clamp as hard as it can and that happens under the hood. Modern Driveline had a prototype clutch master cylinder bracket, which uses the very common fourth gen F body master cylinder. Uh, that's a matter of bolting it up behind the brake booster, modifying the hole in the firewall a little bit where the clutch rod originally came through, and attaching it to the clutch pedal. Uh, from that same point, that's, that's pretty typical and of all the five and six speed swaps we do. Uh, one of the things we did while we were uh, working on the clutch master cylinder was to swap out the brake booster. Uh, we did this for a couple of reasons. One, uh, the owner wanted to have a brake upgrade for the whole car. And two, uh, with the LS3 480, the vacuums, it's sufficient for power brakes, but it's, it's not gonna be the best driving car. So we went with a Hydrotech Hydroboost kit that's designed uh, as a retrofit for the 69 Corvette. Uh, so that when you step on the pedal, it doesn't care what sort of engine vacuum you have, you always have good power brakes because it's run off the hydraulics and the power steering. 
Once the brake parts were bolted together, they were bled to remove any air in the system and deliver a firm pedal feel. Because of the brake upgrade, we needed to change wheels. Uh, the 14-inch Wheelwood brakes aren't going to fit in a stock 15-inch Corvette Rally. Uh, the owner was wanting to keep the car recognizable. Now, this is a 69 Corvette, so we chose year one uh, plus-size wheels. Uh, they, they're cast aluminum, but they look very similar to a stock Rally. Uh, in this case, we ran 17s up front and 18s in the back. And one of the best things about it is they're designed for a Corvette, so you basically pick what diameter you want out of the catalog, and they fit the car. There's, no, there's very little concern about it rubbing. Uh, they also give recommended tire size, so it's, it takes all the guesswork out of putting a set of nice wheels on your car. Also, because they're a, an off-the-shelf wheel, they're cost-effective. There are a lot of other wheels that you can buy that cost you know, many times what these cost. Some wheels even cost what this whole set costs for one. <laughs> Next, the V8 Speed and Resto Shop team worked to allow the new engine and transmission to communicate in the 1969 Corvette. Uh, so today we're working on our 69 Corvette LS3 six-speed swap. And uh, one of the big things about Corvettes is the tack is driven by a cable off the distributor. Well, we don't have a distributor anymore, so there's a couple options. You can run a tack out of a newer third-gen uh, Corvette that's electronic, but then the font's not gonna match quite right. Um, or you can go with something more modern, like these Dakota Digitals. And uh, part of the reason we picked Dakota Digital is because of this little guy. Uh, this is a bus interface module that is designed to work with the Holley CAN bus system. So we'll be drawing all of our engine data through the Holley system instead of having to run a separate set of uh, sensors and wires for everything. So anything uh, that the Holley system is seeing for basic engine parameters, oil pressure, water temperature, tack, uh, if you're running an automatic transmission, vehicle speed, those things all come through the bus. So you only need one sensor or you're not trying to tap into wires and uh, make a mess of things or you have bad connections or messed up signals from trying to share stuff with too many systems. It's a pretty cool little piece. C3 Corvettes actually have gauges in two places. You got your tack and your speedometer directly in front of the driver. And then on the console, you've got your, your engine uh, parameters. You got oil pressure, voltage, coolant temp, and a clock. All the Dakota Digital stuff just falls in where the old stuff came from. Uh, the one thing you do have to change is the Dakota Digital eliminates your warning lights, like your seat belt buzzer, your door jar light. Uh, you can retrofit those back into there, or you can uh, choose to delete them as we do. This Corvette was meant to be driven, so the owner asked us to upgrade his Corvette with a better air conditioning system from Vintage Air. This consists of several major parts, including the condenser that mounts in the front of the radiator, the evaporator under the dash, the compressor on the engine, a controller in the dash, ductwork and vents, and underhood hoses. This is the Vintage Air Gen 4 system, which features cold air and heat and infinitely variable blends between the defrost, dash, and heater vents inside the car. These can be controlled by the original GM panel or custom control panel from Vintage Air. A new radiator is installed with a condenser mounted to it. The evaporator is bolted to the firewall under the dashboard and the high and low pressure refrigerant lines and low pressure heater hoses attached to it. The V8 Speed and Resto Shop has the tools to custom make hoses in-house, allowing them to be routed cleanly or hidden. Earl's black AN fittings provide a clean look. The original Corvette dash knobs were chrome ringed with a black center but our raised transmission tunnel takes up the space needed by the AC controls, so a three-knob vintage air controller is chosen. The V8 team spun the black knobs, revealing a bright aluminum ring to match the original look. When everything is installed and the car is running, 
We'll vacuum test the system for leaks, then charge it with R134A refrigerant. The car came in with a broken radio, so we swapped it with an era correct appearing unit from Custom Auto Sound. These are nice and compact, but feature high power modern technology like Bluetooth and MP3 capability. They also have a two shaft design so they fit the stock hole and look like they belong. Raising the console put a bit of a squeeze on the available space in the dash, so the team was faced with making a new console trim bezel. They fabricated an aluminum console trim plate with formed edges to fit the original hole, but now accepts the six-speed shifter. The console is one of the big uh, challenges on this car because we had to raise the tunnel up so much. Uh, so we did a few things here to try and make this look as stock as possible. Uh, one, we used a custom auto sound radio which has got less depth to it, so we were able to get it in there just above the tunnel. And then uh, this is an original console piece, and they also uh, formed this bezel out of aluminum, and then Jeff wrinkle coated it for us, uh, which is very similar to what was originally in here. Fortunately, because of the amount of space, we had to use a low-profile AC controller, so we got the uh, vintage air streamline here, because you can see it's not that big. Uh, so I'm going to put this in here, uh, and the interior shop's going to make us a boot when they do the carpet for us. and a custom printed tag was made to reflect the new engine specs matching the power and torque output of the LS3. A leather shift boot finishes it off. One of the signature elements of this 69C3 Corvette Roadster is the side pipe exhaust. The V8 team was tasked with keeping the side pipe look and sound, but with no pre-made options to fit the new drivetrain. Once again, they had to build their own. So when we got the car, it had a set of hooker side mount headers and hooker side pipes on it. Uh, the owner kind of wanted to keep that look to the car, but because LS swaps and Corvettes surprisingly aren't that common, there's not a whole lot of options to do a nice side mount header. A set of hooker cast iron manifolds was chosen for their tight fit and high flow characteristics. Uh, one of the things we noticed with the hooker side pipe is that the glass pack muffler in it is pretty restrictive. It's a big four inch pipe, with about a one and a half inch pipe through the middle of it and all packed around it. Uh, so between that and wanting to retain the look, we thought we'd be better off to basically make what we couldn't buy and make our own set of side pipe mufflers. Uh, we contacted our friends at MagnaFlow and were able to get their proprietary packing and then made some parts to actually make our own glass pack side pipes and packed it all and welded it all together. So how did the custom side pipe sound? Uh, it actually sounded really good. Um, it's kind of afraid of a lot of side pipes sound kind of like tractors because you, you only really hear one side of the, of the engine at a time. Uh, but between the performance camshaft and the freer flowing mufflers that we built, uh, it's loud enough that you hear both sides, but it's not so loud that it's no fun to drive. When the wrenches stopped spinning, it was finally time to take the heart transplant Corvette for a spin. Now car's got about 150 miles on it. Uh, just working on getting some bugs out of the tune, uh, feeling the car out, and seeing what other things we need to address. But overall, this thing's great. Uh, six speed is really nice, shifts smooth. Uh, modern driveline did a lot of help with that. The engine's running pretty well. Uh, like I said, this, this bugs in the tune to work out. Once we actually got the car drivable, uh, the thing felt great because in a lot of ways, other than the transmission's not all the way in the back, we, we have basically a sixth generation Corvette now because we have an LS3, we got a six speed uh, Tremec transmission, we got independent suspension, we got big brakes, we got good tires on it. So really it was, it was almost like driving a new car, it just looked old. New technology and power in a classic package. What's not to like? I think we hit the nail on the head for the owner because the, the car's got plenty of power. Um, in my opinion, it doesn't need any more because you can't really use what it's got now. Uh, it always starts, idles, keeps cool, 
got air conditioning if you want to put the top up on a really hot day. Nice radio to listen to. Easy to drive, power steering, power brakes, hydraulic clutch. I mean, what more could you ask for without going and buying a brand new Corvette? Thanks to the team at the V8 Speed and Resto Shop, you can have modern car performance with classic looks. We really enjoyed this project because sometimes building these old cars is not just screwing things together, but it's, it's figuring out solutions and engineering problems out of cars, uh, which we really like to do. We like to be on the cutting edge of doing things. And even though an LS3 and a 69 Corvette doesn't seem like cutting edge, because of fitment issues, it actually was. Uh, so we welcome that type of work and look forward to the next big thing. Perhaps the coolest thing about this car is that the owner drove it home nearly a thousand miles without a hitch. What car project are you dreaming about? Contact the V8 Speed and Resto Shop to learn how the V8 team can bring your ideal classic, muscle car, or show car to life. Reach them at www.v8speedshop.com today.